what is the agenda of the uniform civil court i doubt whether it this government attitude will be progressive towards women if not a ucc in your opinion how can our personal laws be reformed a hindu marriage does not have to be registered divorce also doesn't have to be registered you don't have to go to court anyone can marry again and then discard his first wife among muslims even if it is polygamy is allowed every woman has a right so now when you're saying that we'll bring in uh, monogamy among the muslims the fate of the um, uh, muslim women in bigamous marriages is also going to be similar if a tribal community is exempted then a lot of other people are going to say we also want an exemption so then it cannot be a uniform civil court hello and welcome to this discussion on the news minute the uniform civil code has been in the news recently with many people speaking for and against it the uniform civil code or the ucc is a proposed set of laws concerning issues like marriage divorce adoption inheritance among other things uh, that will if implemented replace all existing personal laws many also allege that the bjp government is pushing this ahead of the 2024 general elections joining me to discuss this today is writer and senior women's rights lawyer flavia agnes who has written extensively on the subject Uh Flavia I would like to ask you you have written many times about how the UCC uh seems like a tool for muslim bashing by a majoritarian government and this has also been a long standing election agenda of the BJP as well so now what do you feel what are your concerns when the BJP is pushing this uh right ahead of the upcoming general elections you know you must have heard the pm speech in bhopal and uh, while the 22nd law commission is supposed to get opinions of people uh, he already made a statement uh, muslim bashing saying that uh, muslims have remained backward because there is no uniform civil code and we want to liberate our muslim sisters so we will bring in a uh, uniform civil code so that they don't remain backward <clears throat> by this statement itself you can make out what is the agenda of the uniform civil code so it's entirely a muslim bashing uh, thing and uh, <clears throat> it is said that uh, b- because muslim uh, under underneath agenda is that among muslims there is polygamy and hence the muslim population is going to increase faster rate muslims are about 14% hindus are 80% but it's at the rate at which it's growing it will soon become majority and that helps to arouse the hindu sentiments against the muslims it's a kind of a tool for divisiveness and that's what i am opposed to right um, you have also written about how uh, we don't need a ucc but we need to look at reforming personal laws to make them equal for everyone this is something the 21st law commission has also spoken about in detail so uh if not a ucc in your opinion how can our personal laws be reformed what are we looking at when we are speaking about reforms in personal laws you know the 21st law commission has given a clear mandate regarding this <clears throat> saying that uniform civil code is neither necessary not desirable at this stage and they have given a complete blueprint to what all needs to be changed to make it gender sensitive so i'm all for it to make the law gender sensitive each personal law <clears throat> whether it is muslim whether it is hindu whether it is christian or parsi or uh, sec- uh, secular marriage every law needs to be uh, gender sensitized because these laws were framed at the time of uh, feudalism so they are feudal in their structure and there is anti women bias over there there's no doubt about it so we need to change that and make make it equal for men and women within each personal laws without having to get, enter into the debate of ucc so that will work well according to me rather than imposing a ucc um you were just also talking about how about um, how this is a muslim, muslim bashing tool um you have authored a paper titled hindu men monogamy and uh, the uniform civil code where you speak about how hindu marriages uh, have been codified and made uh, uniform through the hindu marriage act but 
yet you've spoken about how there are several loopholes in the way in which hindu marriages are con- conducted which enable a lot of men to escape consequences financial and other and also leave their first wives bereft now this is not something that is spoken about a lot uh, in the context of the ucc by the government so could you also speak a little bit about that it's very clear a hindu marriage does not have to be registered and a hindu uh, divorce also doesn't have to be registered you don't have to go to court customary uh, divorce is valid now when it's so plural and there are so many loopholes anyone can marry again and then discard his first wife and that marriage is not even a marriage or rather the second marriage is not even a marriage so the second wife is deprived of all her rights among muslims even if it is polygamy is allowed every woman has a right she can't be just discarded away saying that uh, she is a concubine or she is a mistress or she is a kept woman she is not a wife she has no rights uh, and legitimacy of children is also granted to the uh, children of the polygamous marriage <clears throat> now uh, this is also mentioned in the 21st law commission report saying that although uh, islam uh, muslim law permits uh, polygamy the number of cases of polygamy are uh, among the muslims uh, among the hindus are far more to hindus tribal communities everywhere you can see a lot of uh, polygamy happening and there are no consequences of this so that is the of grave concern so now when you're saying that we'll bring in uh, monogamy among the muslims the fate of the um, uh, muslim women in bigamous marriages is also going to be similar whatever protection they have under their law will be taken out so uh, that is a concern how we how are we going to deal with it like so as a women's rights lawyer who has also engaged quite uh, extensively with the uniform civil code and the different uh, personal laws surrounding it um, with respect to women and gender minorities what do you feel is the biggest challenge as of today with respect to existing personal laws when we look at it from a reform point of view you know i as i mentioned our personal laws are archaic all of them need a re, uh, reform <clears throat> now regarding gender identities it doesn't even deal with it so that's a new issue that has come up so how do we like frame it within the existing structures i think that is of great concern when we say gender relationship gender aspects gender equitability gender equality what do we mean and how do we bring other sexual minorities and other sexual identities into this framework so that is very uh, complex and challenging and we need a blueprint to uh, bring all these rights within the framework of family law Uh, apart from gender and religious minorities the ucc also affects uh, tribal communities and uh, which who the union government now says will will be kept out of the purview of the ucc but do you feel that a ucc would um, hamper the recognition of personal or customary differences thereby uh, essentially must hamper uh, our sense of diversity enabling a monoculture that uh, would get in the way of uh, celebrating the di- diversity of the country as we would you know as we speak about it yeah our, our tribal communities are safeguarded by the constitution and they have a very different system and laws made by the center do not uh, automatically apply to them they are uh, safeguarded under article 371 so they have said that unless you amend the constitution you cannot apply the law to us so nagaland is asked for exemption mizoram is asked for exemption other states will also ask for exemption because they governed by a different system so when you say uniform civil code and they went to the prime minister and they said how can this law apply to us and it does appear even within the ruling dispensation that they are saying that no we cannot apply this to the tribal communities so that is where we are at right at the moment that uh, tribal communities will be <coughs> exempted now if a tribal community is exempted then a lot of other people are going to say we also want an exemption so then it cannot be a uniform civil code so in that context um 
do you feel that it is the political or cultural context of the country that makes a uniform civil code more problematic rather than the idea itself or do you feel that a uniform set of laws for personal matters is in itself as a concept quite discriminatory and impractical and maybe not suited for the kind of diversity that we are looking to uphold there can be diversity but there can be also be gender justice each personal law has to be uh, looked at very carefully and wherever you find gender discrimination that has to be taken out i'm very clear on that i'm not saying the laws must continue as they are in their um, injustice to women that particularly regarding property regarding marriage regarding divorce child custody adoption all these have to be looked at and women should be given equal rights and that has to come from within the community if preferable if it doesn't come within the community then the government should bring this in along with the uh, dialogue from the community women and men right um, there has been a lot of opinion solicitation there's been a lot of uh, discussions about this women and uh, general the general public has been asked what they feel recently there was also an anti ucc seminar which was conducted by the cpim in kerala which saw very 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 uh, negligible presence of women especially muslim women who are also largely impacted by this if it were to be implemented or not in more ways than one so do you feel that the political forums where ucc is being discussed where opinions are being solicited do you feel that those forums really bring up women's rights or that women get a space to speak or do you feel that um, women and gender minorities as well as well as people from different identities do you feel that those opinions really come forth in these political forums and discussions and public meetings there have been a lot of feminist gatherings and feminist meetings where these issues have come up and it's largely women gatherings who are discussing this issue and there have been many such ones where i have participated and opinions differ even there but still there is some space for discussion uh, among the uh, kerala meeting i am not aware but uh, i guess it will be like that that very few muslim women participating in that so and they're not as vocal etc but some are but mostly not so uh we need to like work more so the time gap of that one month that was given and now extended by 15 days is not enough to build consensus in the community we need more time to discuss what it implies how what shape it will take where is the draft and what, which way it is heading we don't know any of it so that's where we need to concentrate and that's more, uh, where, uh, where we need to understand the intent of the government what specific tools do you feel should be used like you said to understand the intent of the government and to also make sure that we are listening to all voices across the spectrum when it comes to a ucc what what methods what modules do you think how else can we go deeper into this in terms of opinion gathering to be fair when when a decision is reached as to whether or not a large number of people have responded to the law commission we don't know what their responses are about like 45 47 lakh people they say have responded we don't know what they have all said uh, and we will only come to know when the law commission gives its response uh, but overall i say that uh, this is one good way of getting public opinion on this uh, to find out what people are thinking about it but apart from that there has to be community consciousness there has to be community level meetings a uh, lot for instance a uh, lot of christians were not engaged with this debate at all they felt that it does not concern them it's an issue between hindus and muslims but actually it concerns them it concerns everybody so uh, for instance hindus think it will not affect them it is only affecting the muslims but the hindu undivided uh, family property issue will concern the uh, uh, the hindus very clearly and the 21st law commission has very clearly stated that hf property should be abolished but this government and uh, this uh, prime minister or law commission has not flagged this issue so we don't know whether it is only for muslims they are they are bringing in the reform or for everybody they are bringing in the reform are they making property rights e- equal and equitable between men and women uh, everywhere what about gender minorities how they are going to bring gender minorities gender identities into this debate all that is yet to be discussed so it is not clear at all at this moment there are feminist queer activists 
who have flagged this issue very clearly. And uh, there is a, a detailed feminist response that has gone to law commission. So um, that has uh, spelled out a lot of issues. Uh, so we don't know how where it's going to lead us. But uh, I feel that at this moment, this discussion on the eve of uh, elections was not required at all. But having come up, now we need to deal with it. Uh, considering the government's stand on, like you just said, gender minorities, on marriage equality, on uh, other uh, kinds of chosen relationships, etc., do you think that, let's say, hypothetically, uh, a, a UCC comes into place? Do you feel that it is possible for it to be really progressive? I doubt whether it, this government's attitude will be progressive towards women, because, and particularly Muslim women. And, uh, our Prime Minister expressed concern for his Muslim sisters. But overall, if we see the government stand on may, various other issues regarding the Muslim community, it's not been uh, sensitive at all. So uh, how can we believe the government saying that now they want to bring the uh, uniform civil code and the reforms uh, to liberate the Muslim women? Um, it, it is clearly a Muslim bashing thing. And we need uh, a lot of more discussion regarding property inheritance. And if somebody dies without making a will, uh, and usually the practice is to uh, disinherit the daughter and give the property to the male child. But in Muslim law, there is a protection that you cannot uh, will away more than one third of the property and the rest has to go to legal heirs. Now, something like that will come, will it come into the Hindu law to protect the legal heirs so that women's rights are protected. So all these things we need to take in on board and see where we are going with this. Um, do you, um, so taking into consideration everything that we've just spoken about, if, if it was up to you, if you were to think of a progressive UCC, which cons considers everything, all the problems as we see them now, uh, what would be some uh, very important things that you would want to see in it? Or for you, in your imagination, what would a progressive uh, uniform civil code look like? If it I, would go, I would not think of a uniform civil code. I would go back to the 21st Law Commission and look at the reforms suggested therein and try to implement them and see how it looks. Also, since uh, 2018, uh, there are a lot of uh, discussions about transgender and queer community and a lot of, lot of discussion, debate has gone on. A lot of rights have been given. So we have to include the, those also within the recommendations of the 2018 Law Commission and then see where we are progressing and how we are progressing and how to protect the rights of women and marginalized communities. Right. Um, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Uh, thank you for taking the time out and speaking to us. What happens with the Uniform Civil Code uh, remains to be seen. But thank you for joining this discussion. Uh, for everyone watching, uh, do watch, like, share and subscribe if you like the news and views that we put out for for more news views and updates do consider becoming a member of the news minute